Can the weather in terms of temperature affect the way a carburettor functions and therefore create the need to adjust the carburettor? Does the carburettor have to be adjusted differently for a warmer climate than it does for a colder climate? Well, in this video clip from my full video, I've brought out this information so you can get to it quickly and efficiently should you want to. The full video is in the link below in the description. And as usual, I'm going to put in some visuals for a deeper understanding. Welcome to the Repair Specialist channel. I'm Craig, the owner and creator. And having been in the trade for around 30 years, I now make videos relating to the diagnosis and repair of small engines and machinery, and how things work and why. And in layman's terms, using clear visual explanations to help you gain a deeper understanding and a firmer knowledge base. Why? Because knowledge is power. So, let's get to it. And supporting this video is a free download leaflet of how to tune your chainsaw. There's a link in the description below that will take you onto my website where you can download this, as I've said, completely free. The best of it is, is it's printable and you can take it into your workspace with you and tune your chainsaw at your leisure. Okay, so as usual, let's take a look inside this machine at the engine and carburettor. Although I'm showing a chainsaw here, the principles are the same for other two-stroke machinery. So as we know, when the engine starts to move, it draws in air through the induction tube of the carburettor, and as it passes the main jet, it draws out fuel hopefully at the right amount to allow for a good ratio between air and fuel for the engine to run optimal. And so on most two-stroke carburettors, we know we have these fuel adjustment screws, which allows more or less fuel into the induction tube of the carburettor. But one of the reasons we need to adjust the fuel in the carburettor is not literally down just to the fuel itself, it's because of the air that enters the carburettor. There's other factors that affect the air to begin with, such as temperature, but how exactly? Well, let's take a look. If we could see the air molecules, and the air molecules are made up of different gases, we'd see that the air molecules themselves are vibrating with energy. And it's the temperature of the air that depends on how much these molecules vibrate and it's their vibration level that depends on how close or how far these molecules exist from each other. So in this instance, let's say the air is moderately warm. There's going to be a certain gap between each molecule because of their vibrations. And that means in a certain area, there's only going to be so many molecules because they've spread out slightly from each other. In other words, there's a certain density to this air at a moderately warm temperature. So then, if the air temperature was to increase to being hot, we'd see that the molecules are vibrating even more erratically and they've spread out from each other further. So we can see that compared to the moderately warm, which had a certain volume of these air molecules, we've got much less air molecules now in that same given area. And so it's much less dense. So, in basic terms, how does that affect the air-to-fuel ratio inside the carburettor? Well, let's work off a moderately warm temperature. We can see with this example that the moderately warm air has a certain density that's correct to give a good air-to-fuel ratio for the engine. So, let's say then that this carburettor was designed to run in this moderately warm climate with this level of air density to allow this fuel to be of the right constitution with the air for the engine to run correctly. And then we take the same carburettor and we go and run it in a hot climate where the air coming into the carburettor is much hotter and less dense. What we would find is that the air to fuel ratio is now different. We've actually got less air molecules in there compared to the set amount of fuel coming out of the main jet. And that means we've now got an air to fuel ratio that's rich with fuel because there's more fuel to air ratio. Now the level of air molecules coming into the engine would of course reduce the efficiency of the engine and slow the engine down anyway and that would bring out less fuel. But it would still be an air to fuel mixture that's too rich for the engine. 
So in this situation, we could either keep the engine running in this most inefficient way, or if we've got fuel adjuster screws, we can screw them in slightly and reduce the amount of fuel coming out of the main jet, making the fuel more lean, therefore making the fuel a better ratio with the air that's available, allowing the engine to run as best as it can. Which of course would be much better than it was if we didn't adjust it. OK, so let's have a look at what happens in a cold climate. Let's imagine then that we've got our moderately warm climate back, our moderately warm air. And because in this scenario our carburetor was set in a moderately warm climate, let's now see what happens if we take this carburetor and we use it in a cold climate. So if this carburetor has been set, let's say in the spring or early summer, and we don't use it again until the winter, what's going to happen there? Well, let's take a look at our air molecules again. We can see with a moderate temperature, they're vibrating at a certain speed, allowing them a certain distance from each other. But when the air gets cold, their vibration drastically reduces. And because of that, they can aggregate closer together. And that means, in the given area that we've been talking about, there's more air molecules. Therefore, the air is more dense. So inside our carburetor, that's set for a moderately warm climate, we can see now that the increased density of the air means that there's too much air in there now compared to the set amount of fuel. And because we've now got far less fuel than air, it's now a lean air to fuel mixture and the engine just won't run right. And again, we could either use the machine in this weakened state or if we've got fuel adjustment screws, we can unscrew them slightly, letting more fuel down into the induction tube and making it a better air to fuel ratio for the engine to run the best it can. And on the other side of the coin then, if this carburetor was set during the winter, where we can see a good air to fuel ratio here now, if this machine is then used in the summer where the air is warmer, we can see the problems we're going to get. Because the air is slightly warmer, it's less dense, and that's upset the air to fuel ratio once again. It's become more rich. So in this instance, we can screw the adjuster screws inwards to reduce the amount of fuel coming out into the induction tube and making it a better air to fuel ratio once more. OK, so don't forget to take advantage of the RepairSpecialistOnline.com website where from the landing page, you can click this button here, free printable downloads onto the download page and you can see I've got six free downloads here. The best of them are that they're printable and you can take them into your workspace with you and they're on several different topics. We have one on lawnmower ignition coil care, a checklist, the Briggs and Stratton diaphragm replacement guide, unflood your chainsaw without or with tools, how to order the correct chain every time for your chainsaw, how to tune a chainsaw guide and a chainsaw won't run. As I've said, they're absolutely free and the download buttons are in the gold. And if I just take you through the process, because I've been asked this question, how you do this. So click free, download, scroll down, add to cart, then view cart, then get my download. You can see here, it's absolutely free. There's no payment at all. So get my free download. For the phone number, you may just use any number. I don't need the phone number, but we do need an email address. OK, so I've filled that in my name, last name and email address and click. And as you can see, we're still here. I have no charge and place order. And then we come to this screen here. Thank you and your name. And then it says download. Click download and off it goes onto your PC. So a really big thank you for coming to the end of this video and I hope you've gained something from it. Thank you for watching.